It's not an overstatement to say that my life changed when I went to the British Juggling Convention in York. In the year 2000, I saw Anthony Ghetto performing in the gala show and also breaking world records. And I kind of set a plan for myself, set a goal for myself anyway, that one day I would be performing in gala shows at the big juggling conventions and also would have world records. But it wasn't just Anthony Gatto who influenced me to set this plan for me to get world records of my own. There was somebody else there who I met for the first time at that convention. It was Ben Beaver. And uh, Ben Beaver was an amazing juggler and would become a great friend and a massive influence on my juggling. Unfortunately, he died young, tragically. He fell off his balcony in his apartment uh, about two years ago. Last week was the two-year anniversary of his uh, sudden death. And uh, it's, it really hit me hard. But what happened also is that this year I've been looking back through video footage that I captured from the year 2000 through to about 2005. And I found a lot of video footage of Ben. And it brought back so many memories and so many stories that I thought I would share some of them here in this video. So this is an introduction to Ben Beaver and some of my personal stories and my juggling experience with Ben. Five, four, three, two. Ben Beaver was one of the best jugglers in the UK in the early 2000s and it's objectively clear that he was because he would just win all of the ball endurance competitions. The seven ball endurances and also mostly the five ball endurances. And uh, this was actually a mini goal of mine. that I knew that my five ball pattern would be really solid when it would come down to the end of a five ball endurance at a game session at a small convention and it would just be me and Ben and I would win. And it was often me and Ben, but he would always beat me until about three years later when I finally beat him for the first time. And that was kind of an affirmation for me that yes, my five ball pattern was truly solid. It wasn't sort of like a, a personal vendetta against Ben that he always beat me, um, but it was just a clear sign that I was improving a lot. Ben was also known as Sideswap Ben because he was an amazing sideswap juggler. He's one of the only people I know who's been able to think in sideswaps. You could just say any combination of numbers, which is a valid sideswap, he'd just go tick, 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 tick over in his brain and then be able to juggle them. It was really incredible to see. So he did workshops with sideswaps, he uh, performed sideswaps on stage, he would uh, write, he wrote a book about sideswaps. He's the first person to ever do the DB97531 trick and uh, some notation that he came up with, we all still use today, with the, like six. 6x4 star, the star meaning, do this the same on the other side, that was Ben's invention and now it's in common usage. And uh, it was so great to be able to have someone like that to be able to talk about sight swaps and juggling notations. As you can tell from my recent videos here on this channel, I'm a really big juggling notation nerd and uh, a big part of that is early conversations with Ben Beaver. Another big influence that Ben had on me was with numbers juggling. He was into numbers juggling and so I got into numbers juggling. He was always way ahead of me though, uh, in fact ahead of most people. He was the second person in the world to ever flash 12 balls, he was working on 11 and all these kind of stuff. And again like with Anthony Gatto, what Anthony Gatto does on stage, I'm happy to do the same with two balls less. The same thing was true with me and Ben. On the day that he uh, uh, was working on 11 balls and we managed to get a video of him doing 11 balls was the first day that I managed to get nine balls, a nine ball flash um, on camera for the first time. Later on that day though, he also did nine balls but on stage on the Renegade uh, show. That was another thing that uh, Ben did a lot of was performing. He wasn't a, a natural performer, but because he was just so good, he was often asked, hey, would you try something out on stage? Would you do something on stage? And he would, and because he was just so good at uh, numbers juggling and sight swaps and weird, interesting patterns, he could just get up there, put some music on, juggle, and just blow everyone away. I tried that as well. I wasn't good enough at him to pull it off. I had to kind of do, go in a different way with my performing, but Ben was just so good and so consistent, he could just amaze audiences just by getting up and doing numbers and sight swaps.
Patrick. Right. <laughs> 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 Thank One of my favourite memories of performing with Ben was at a Renegade show after the Liverpool convention in uh, 2002. We were in a bar, the ceiling was really low, but the challenge was set, who could do the best numbers juggling under the low ceiling? <laughs> very good at ball passing and you would work with Graham and they would perform and work on numbers juggling and with their numbers juggling they got up to I think 16 and 17 balls and then me and Ben decided hey we're both like numbers juggling as well we should pass together and so we did and at the EJC in 2002 in Bremen we uh, tried out 17 balls together and managed to get that on video for the first time and also 18 balls and we managed to get that on video for the first time and that was actually a world record. And so my plan of having a world record of my own was actually accomplished in about two and a half years with Ben Beaver, who inspired me to break world records. And it was really great to have the highest record, it was the record for the highest number of objects ever juggled between two people, 18 balls for 18 passes caught. And that record stood for about five years until July of 2008, when Roger Levicki and Viktor Teslenko passed 18 rings between them. And then suddenly we weren't special anymore. We, didn't we weren't unmatched with objects juggled between two people. So a month later, it was the EJ in 2008 in Karlsruhe and Ben and me got together and we had a juggling session. 17 balls was uh, getting there pretty easy and we started working on 18, we got that and then we started working on 19 balls and we tried it in one session and got pretty close but didn't quite get there so we thought we'll set up another session later on. Uh, but we decided we didn't just want to do it ourselves, we would do it in public. So I announced on the open stage when I was hosting, I said, tomorrow at four o'clock in the afternoon, Ben and me, we're going, to put, we're going to try and break a world record, so come along and see it. So four o'clock the next day, I was there, 
um, about 100 people there to watch the world record attempt, but Ben Beaver uh, didn't turn up at all. And everyone was going, where's Ben? And I was looking around for Ben. In the end, he didn't show up. Me and Peter Bone had a numbers session and some passing, but we didn't really get very far with that. And uh, everyone left not very, uh, not very satisfied. And then the next day I met up with Ben and the reason he'd uh, not turned up was he'd been playing on a children's playground and there'd been some bars and he'd swung himself around and smashed his face and split his face open on, uh, on, a, on a cross beam or something like that and he had blood coming out and he had to go to the first age and get all patched up and he was a bit concussed. And so a few days later, um, with no audience around, we met up again in the workshop room at the convention and we worked on the numbers juggling again. Again, 17 balls clicked in place pretty quickly and then after about an hour and a half of drying, we managed to get the 19 balls for the first time. And that record stood 19 balls or 19 objects between two people. It stood for about another five or six years until it was broken by people like uh, Dave Leahy and Dan Wood and other people like that juggling together. And I always presumed that in the future, me and Ben would, you know, get together and try it out. But he was living in the UK, I was living in Germany, and every time we'd meet up at a juggling convention, which wasn't often by then, we didn't want to put in hours and hours and hours of training into numbers passing. We'd just rather spend the time hanging out and chatting and drinking and just generally juggling and hanging out together uh, rather than putting in the effort because it takes a lot of effort to try and break world records and we just never had the time. But I always presumed that in the future we would find the time and and we'd try to get, you know, whatever the next step of the world record was, 21 balls, 22 balls. It could have been possible. We might have been able to do it. But then he died, so that will never happen. And it really hit me. I was like, why didn't I ever, why didn't we ever do this? It, it could have been there, but now that chance has gone. And now I looked at the Wikipedia page of Juggling World Records, neither me or Ben are on there, but I still have that moment, I still have those memories, great memories, and video as well, of us getting those world records for the first time and all the effort and the camaraderie that goes into that. So these are a few of my stories, but let's bring this story full circle because it turns out when I was at the British Juggling Convention in 2000, I was there with my video camera. I wasn't really planning on sharing a lot of videos. I was gonna get the screenshots and share lots of photos. And one way that I would know who was who to credit and say who they were in the photo was to record myself uh, with the camera going up to them and asking them their names so I could credit them later. Excuse me, what's your name? Charlie. Charlie. Peter. 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 Caseman. Peter Caseman. Bryn Davis. Bryn Davis. You can't get much more worth your name than that. Dave. Mr. Dave. Jellybean. I'm Luke. Hi, I'm Luke. And That's you're Luke. Luke. There's a couple of us here. Though. Yeah, I see so. What's your name? Ben. 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 Beaver. Ben Beaver. I'm Luke. Alright. Just, just getting some photos yeah. to put them on the website. So. Alright, excellent. What's the website? Um, and that was the start of my very first ever conversation with Ben. And I totally forgot that I had this bit of video. I remembered meeting Ben for the first time at that juggling convention, but I didn't really, I mean, who would think that you would have a video recording of the moment that you meet someone and introduce yourself for the first time at that moment, not knowing that that person would become such a great friend and a juggling partner, a sometime performing partner uh, and such a massive influence on your life as a juggler. And that happened with me and Ben. And when I first looked back through that clip, I got so emotional because like, who would think that you would have that record of meeting your friend, your future friend, uh, and introducing yourself to someone for the first time? There are many other Ben Beaver stories, but this video has been a little bit of my story uh, of juggling with Ben Beaver. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, 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 oh,
Thank <laughs> you.